What's up guys, it's Tyler from Reversion Raceworks and today I'm in the print room. Oh damn, two more spools. All I did was hit print and this thing jumped out. If you've been following us or seen any of our other videos, you know we're a big fan of the CR-10S5. We have six of them running here. We have another one at a remote location with Spencer. And we pretty much have these things running 24 seven. They've been great machines, super reliable, and they make big parts. We even tried our hand at building a custom one with this Core XY conversion. It's a good machine, but it takes a lot of work to set these things up. One of our favorites is our Modix Big Meter. This thing is just an absolute beast. We have a lot in the works for this machine. We have some new mods, upgrades, updates that we want to take care of on it. Let us know down below if you want to see that in a future video. I think that's enough about these old machines. What do we have coming up? The Creality K2 Plus. While I still love our CR-10s and I have zero intention of ever getting rid of these things, I think it is time for us to get with modern times. This machine has LiDAR and Flow Advance and all these other features that our old machines just don't have. Uh, this thing also has a heated chamber which is going to help us do higher grade engineering materials that even though we're in a nice print room, with these machines being open format, it, they just can't do it. I don't mean to keep bringing up the CR-10S5, but we're obviously big fans of them. One thing I'm really excited about is those machines take us about two days to set up when you consider all the modifications we do, because we pretty heavily modify the wiring, the firmware, the board, and even some modifications to the chassis. So they're not very simple, and I'm pretty excited to get a mostly assembled machine coming right out of the box. This was honestly heavily inspired by our marketing guy, Nick, because he just got himself a K1 Max, I believe, and he's had some pretty dang good results with it. We decided to go with the K2 Plus, and uh, let's see how easy this thing goes together. One thing that's pretty cool, though, is there is a QR code right here on the top. When you scan that, it brings you right to some instructions, which I can't say we've ever had with the S5, especially because we're doing it all pretty custom and uh, we made our own internal instructions but you could ask Max what he thinks of those. Well I think that's enough of me blabbering on about printers. Let's open this thing up and see what it takes to get together. This is where it's getting crazy. They've got the top glass just taped to the side of this thing, so let's be careful with that. I'll put this over here for now. And got a manual with some stickers too. And it looks like this foam just pops out. And you get a couple spools of filament to start you off with. I do have to say, this is a lot heavier than the typical Creality printer. We also got this thing with the CFS, so to my understanding, it is bolted in. So we'll have to get those little fasteners out. And I'm pretty impressed with this chassis. It's a hell of a lot better than the old aluminum extrusions like you would on these machines. Honestly, I kind of hate that. So I'm pretty happy seeing that these printer manufacturers are going to a more like actual chassis design specific to the printer instead of these just like universal hobbyist solutions. Well, let's get the CFS out of this thing and continue on with setup. I'm sure they included a tool for this, but I'd rather just use a ratchet. All right, now this thing's ready to come out. Trying to see what's a good spot to grab. Oh, this thing's pretty light. Oh, damn. Two more spools. Let's see what size those are. There's four little screws that hold this plate down. And yep, yeah, they're the same size as before. I guess this is just to lock the bed in place while it's being transported. 
now we gotta install the screen and I guess this little swivel bracket. So we'll see how that goes. And there's instructions on the back of that too. You definitely wanna be gentle when you're around ribbon cables. You wanna have this little tang on the bottom. And then you wanna put this ribbon connector through and then get those four little screws in place. These are all two and a half millimeter, by the way. There we go. Let's grab that guy. There you go. Just snaps right in place. And that's cool. So you could tilt it depending on where you have this on your shelf. The best part of any install. Huh. There is actually filament on the nozzle, so that's pretty cool to see that they are testing these machines before they send them out. Yeah, look at that. A little bit of blue, probably PLA. Let's get the top glass put in place. Again, I'm pretty impressed with all the packaging on this thing. Then that bad boy just sits right on top. If anything, it's a very good looking machine, to say the least. Now it's time to handle the CFS. The design of it's pretty cool. Is it has these locking tabs on both sides. Once you get it closed, you can cinch it down, just like that. And then when you pop this guy open, the lid has a groove going all the way around it, as well as a seal that's definitely gonna help keep moisture out of this thing which, if you've been into 3D printing at all, you know that's a great feature, trying to keep moisture out of your filaments. Another cool feature is these compartments. They're really meant for desiccants. You can pop them open, and uh, that'll really help keep your pre-dried filament dry in here. I don't believe that there's a heat element in this thing, but we'll find out in a little bit. Let's get to actually wiring it up and getting this thing fired up. So this is what I was talking about with the desiccants. They actually included it, and off camera I popped these out. So I'm going to swap these out because we actually pre-dry ours in this food dehydrator where we dry our filament but also have a bunch of desiccants. So we could throw some ones we know for sure are dry up in there. If one thing's for sure, we got to reorganize this room a little bit. But that pretty much seems to do it for the setup on this machine. I've got it plugged into one of our UPSs and uh, I'm gonna put power to it and see what that entails. I'm pretty sure you gotta update the firmware and whatnot, but we'll walk you through those steps too. We've got a temperature and humidity reading. All right, so that's what I was doing wrong. You gotta download the Creality app on your phone. Make an account, of course. Go to the QR scan up top, and then I'm pretty sure this is how it will recognize your machine. There we go. All right, now we just let it do its own self-check, which says it'll take about 16 minutes, and we'll be back in a little bit. So we still have the initial startup going, and it's almost done. It's just going through the auto bed leveling right now. And here we can see the thing moving already. All right, now the self-check is completed. We hit OK. The firmware is out of date, which is what I've heard how they come. So we'll hit download there. All right, now we got the firmware all updated. It's just saying to make sure you recalibrate before you do anything. So we will hit OK and do start detecting. All right, now it's, I think all the calibrations are done, and this display is pretty cool. It's super responsive. I mean, I've never used one of these before, so this is all newfound territory to me. We've got a couple of parts preloaded into it, I'm guessed from them testing. So I'd shown you the nozzle temperature, bed temperature, chamber temperature. I'm guessing that's a speed override. And I'm not really sure what that, oh, that's probably shutting the motors off so you could move things around. 
And then you could also just turn fans on, filament. I'm pretty sure you could tell it what's in there, but we'll probably have to put filament. With the filament, I'm pretty sure you could tell it what's in there if it's a non-reality RFID filament. But we'll have to mess with that. Print settings. What happens if you check that? Put it on professional and see what that does. Because you know we're professionals in here. All right, let's get some filament in this thing. I was thinking we might as well start with one of the spools the printer was included with. So we, I grabbed the blue PLA. I think it's only 500 grams. Yeah, and this is what I was talking about with the RFID. They have one on each side, which is pretty cool. Damn. I guess it could just kind of figure it out on its own. It did pick up that we put blue filament in there, which is kind of wild. Let's get this thing printing. I'm just going to do your tried and true Benchy and let's see what it does. Oh, that came off the bed pretty easy and that brim came right off and I think for a first print that's pretty incredible I mean I don't know how you beat that this thing took really not much time to set up and I think I could have had this set up in less than 30 minutes if I wasn't trying to record it for you guys I mean you watch the video all I did was hit print and this thing jumped out so I'm pretty impressed Another thing worth noting though on this printer is it does poop. There is a filament shoot right down here. And when the nozzle wipes, it's gonna shoot filament out here. So I'm definitely gonna look on Thingiverse or something and see what we can do to collect that. Well, that's gonna wrap things up for today. I only only got one part done, but we were here at the shop all day and I kind of want to go home. That setup was pretty straightforward. I hope that helped you guys learn something and maybe helped you make a decision on what your next printer could potentially be. Uh, don't get me wrong, I still love these other platforms. There really isn't other options for a large printer when it comes to the S5, any of the Modix machines. But if you're just looking to do smaller parts, engineering grade filaments, I just think it's hard to beat the K2 Plus when it comes to these things. We definitely have a lot more testing to do. Let me know if you guys like this type of content and let me know if you have any questions as far as 3D printing, materials, reverse engineering. Let us know down below what you want to see. Subscribe and stay tuned for more. How do you shut this thing off?